Astana is the first capital being built in the 21st century, and it perfectly represents where the world is headed. It is truly one man's vision. Nur Sultan Nazarbayev, the ex-president of Kazakhstan. Backed by billions of petrodollars, the city is being built from scratch in a remote and deserted area of the Asian steppes. The result is astonishing. A futuristic occult capital, embracing the NWO while celebrating the most ancient religion known to man sun worship. The city is still a huge construction site, but the buildings that are already completed already sum up Nazarbayev's occult vision. Conceived by Britain's most prolific architect, Lord Norman Forster, this giant pyramid is an odd presence in the middle of the Asian steppes. The building is dedicated to the renunciation of violence and to bring together the world's religions. Norman Foster has said that the building has no recognizable religious symbols to permit the harmonious reunification of confessions. In reality, the pyramid is a temple for the occultists' only true religion, sun worship. A journey inside this building is a truly symbolic one. It represents each human's path to elimination. Let's take the tour. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. The initiates accepted the pyramid form as the ideal symbol of both the secret doctrine and those institutions established for its dissemination. As Manly P. Hall stated, the pyramid is the ultimate symbol representing the mysteries of ancient civilizations. Sublime in their simplicity, divine in their proportions, they embody both the divine knowledge owned by the illuminated and the bewilderment of the masses. Today's elite, initiated to the occult, are the heirs of this ancient wisdom, and use the pyramid as a symbol of power in the modern world. The illuminated or floating or missing capstone, represents the divine principle present in the universe as well in each human being. Another symbolic meaning attributed to the missing capstone is the unfinished nature of the NWO. It is said, that the capstone of the Great Pyramid will be reinstated when this age-old project will become reality. Here are other pyramids appearing across the world, representing the elite's power over the masses. Memphis Arena. Luxor Hotel, Las Vegas. Raffles Hotel, Dubai. When entering the pyramid at ground level, the interior is dark and cavernous. The basement houses Astana's Opera House, where the unsuspecting mass gets entertained. Despite the darkness, a huge image of the sun occupies almost all of the ceiling. Right on top of the Opera House is the central space of the pyramid. It acts as the meeting room for conferences reuniting religious leaders of the world. Take a minute and soak up the symbolism here. You have religious leaders from around the world sitting around a huge figure of the sun, discussing how to reconcile their differences for the coming new age. The symbolism is blatant. All these theologies are simply an outgrowth of the original object of worship. The sun. This space is much more luminous than the Opera House, representing the progress towards illumination. The sun image in the middle of the round table is exactly on top of the sun of the Opera House. So, while the general population is being entertained in the darkness of the material world, the illuminated, sitting right on top of them, are contemplating how to reach godliness. If you are already familiar with this, you might be aware of the objectives of the NWO. One of them is the replacement of all religions by a form of neo-paganism. This is what those meetings are for. The city of Astana is truly a city of the NWO. The apex is literally heavenly. 
It is round, totally windowed and bathing in glorious sunlight. Images of white doves are embedded in the windows, representing peace, which will result in the unification of the world governments and religions in the NWO. The apex is the ultimate representation of the achievement of illumination, on an individual, and on the worldly level. Look at the ceiling of the apex. The solar deity is shining upon the illuminated. Beautiful. The pyramid's divisions, the lower dark opera house, the middle conference room, and the godly apex, embody the Pythagorean vision of the world. Pythagoras's teachings are thoroughly studied in today's occult societies. Pythagoras divided the universe into three parts, which he called the supreme world, the superior world, and the inferior world. The highest, or supreme world, was a subtle interpenetrative spiritual essence, pervading all things and therefore the true plane of the supreme deity itself, the deity being in every sense omnipresent, omniactive, omnipotent, and omniscient. Both of the lower worlds existed within the nature of this supreme sphere. The superior world was the home of the immortals. It was also the dwelling place of the archetypes, or the seals, their natures in no manner partook of the material of earthiness, but they, casting their shadows upon the deep, or the inferior world, were cognizable only through their shadow. The third, or inferior world, was the home of those creatures who partook of material substance, or were engaged in labor with or upon material substance. Hence, this sphere was the home of mankind and the lower kingdoms, those temporarily of the earth but capable of rising above that sphere by reason and philosophy. In other words, this pyramid, much more than being a tourist attraction, is a representation of the philosophy of the initiates. As Dan Cruikshanks rather cryptically said in his documentary, it is a representation of the power to come. Also designed by the distinguished British architect Sir Norman Foster, the monument is meant to embody a folktale about a mythical tree of life and a magic bird of happiness. The bird, named Samrick, had laid its egg in the crevice between two branches of a poplar tree. The egg, the golden globe at the top of the monument, represents, once again, the sun, the supreme deity. This tree of life, represents the channel through which spirits go to leave the material world and join the divine world. This concept is recurrent in most, if not all, esoteric societies. Visitors can go at the top of the tower and get a wonderful view of Nazarbayev's city. There are also some strange items to look at. Inside the globe, we find this enigmatic thing. It's a golden triangle with President Nazarbayev's handprint in it. Why? I honestly don't know. All I can say is that it looks like something out of the movie Total Recall. It is a globe, signed by representatives from 17 religious denominations. Yes, once again, talking about uniting all religions into one of the NWO and all of that. two pillars and one in between, further away. Is there a chance that this may be Masonic symbolism? Yes, the twin golden pillars, represent the two pillars of masonry named Bose and Jachin. I won't go into the whole symbolism behind those pillars, but we can probably assume that Nazarbayev is a free and accepted mason. This is a palace between two pillars, Placed in a commanding position in the city, the presidential palace sits at the end of a ceremonial route which starts with the Baderek Tower. A big fat dome sits on top of the palace, representing the female principle, in opposition to the phallic Baderek Tower, the male principle. This layout is present in almost all important cities, including Washington DC and Paris. This oddity is designed, once again, by Sir Norman Foster, he basically designed the whole city. Underneath the tent, an area larger than 10 football stadiums, is an urban-scale internal park, shopping, and entertainment venue, with squares and cobbled streets, a boating river, shopping center, mini-golf, and indoor beach resort. 
it has been said that this structure is made to look like a tabernacle on par with the Temple of Solomon. These portable places of worship, composed of tents, were used by Jews during biblical times. Initiates a tribute to these ancient settlements and esoteric meaning. As members of the world elite are fulfilling the conditions required to unite the world into a single government, they are scattering all over the world symbols of their power. The fact that the general population has no idea what those structures represent, is exactly the reason why their plans go forward unquestioned and unnoticed. But those plans have been here for ages now. Manly P. Hall wrote in 1918. When the mob governs, man is ruled by ignorance, when the church governs, he is ruled by superstition, and when the state governs, he is ruled by fear. Before men can live together in harmony and understanding, ignorance must be transmuted into wisdom, superstition into an illuminated faith, and fear into love. Mob is equal to democracy, church is equal to religion, and state is equal to countries. In other words, before men can live in harmony, we have to abolish democracy, because the mass is too dumb, religions, because they are superstitions, and states, because we need one world government. He continues. The perfect government of the earth must be patterned eventually after that divine government by which the universe is ordered. In that day, when perfect order is re-established, with peace universal and good triumphant, men will no longer seek for happiness, for they shall find it welling up within themselves. Sound good doesn't it? Have a nice day. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This Everything Inside Me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.